Actually, one last quick question, which uh, I, I thought of asking. Now that I'm interviewing smart, knowledgeable people, it occurred to me to ask this question of uh, Max Tegmark, and then I forgot. So this will be the inaugural question with you. Who's your vote for the smartest person who has ever lived? If we had to put up one human brain, past or present, to dialogue with the aliens, who would you say would be uh, so our, our best candidate So this is different from asking who, who has contributed most to human yes, knowledge, who, yes. who has created most. Yeah, absolutely. It's rather who, who has the highest IQ. It's good to differentiate those because there are people, obviously, who are quite smart, who have contributed more than anyone in sight to our knowledge. But when you look at how they think and what they did, there's no reason to think they were as smart as John von Neumann, say. So I'm going after the von Neumann, if not... Okay. In that case, I, I think it probably has to be Feynman. Uh, though his his achievements in physics are nowhere near those of say Einstein, I I, I met him only once, and and uh, the people were saying to me, you know, you'll have heard a lot of stories about Feynman, but you know he's only human, and and uh, well, to cut a long story short, I went and met him, and the stories were all true. He is an absolutely amazing intellect. Mm. And you know, I haven't met many of the others. I never met Einstein. But my impression is that he was something unusual. I should add, in don't, terms of achievement, I, I would also add Popper. Don't cut that long story so short. What was that like being with Feynman? And can you get a handle on what was unusual? Well, very quick on the uptake. So that is is not so unusual in, in a university environment. Um, but the creativity applied directly to getting things. So, okay, uh, let me give you an example. At, at the time when I met him, I, I was sent to meet him by my boss uh, when, when I was just beginning to develop the ideas of quantum computation. And I had, uh, I, I had constructed what, uh, what we would today call a quantum algorithm, a very, very simple one. It's called the Deutsch algorithm. It, it's not much <laughs> by today's standards. Um, but um, I had I had been uh, working on this for m many months, and uh, I, I went and uh, started telling him about quantum computers. He was very quick. He was very interested, and then he said, uh, "So what what can these computers do?" So I said, "Well, you know, I've been working on quantum algorithm," and he said, uh, "What?" And and so I began to tell him about it. Hmm. Uh, and I said, supposing you had a superposition of two different initial states. And then he said, well, then you just get random numbers. And I said, yes, but supposing you then do an interference experiment. And and I started to speak and he said, no, no, stop, stop. Let me work it out. <laughs> and he rushed over to the to the blackboard and he produced my algorithm with with almost no hint. <laughs> Um, so, of, so of and where how, it was going. how much work did that represent? How much work did he recapitulate? I don't know because I, it's hard to it's hard to say with the benefit of hindsight how much of a clue mm. the few words I said were. <laughs> but you know, the crude measure is a few months. Right. But right. I, I, a better measure is that I was flabbergasted. I'd never seen anything like this before, hmm. and I, I, you know, I had been interacting with some extremely smart people. Right. Well, And your boss was John Wheeler at that point? Yes. Yes. Right. At that time. Yes. So no dunce himself. That's right. What a wonderful story. I'm glad I asked.